do we so do we have somebody taking the minutes or we're just going to record it we're going to record it bird or lisa or eddie would you be able to take minutes today i'm in a car so if bird could do it it'd be great i don't do minutes i don't do minutes um we got Carol. Carol, I see you on. Would you be able to, to, to do minutes? I nominate Carol. We're going to record everything. We're going to record the entire meeting. So, uh, but, but we do want to have a short version. So, uh, David Haney could could do that from there if he wanted to. Just as long as that we know who's that we have that covered. That's all I'm saying. And I would do that, but I just finished writing a grant and my brain is a little dead. And I'm left-handed. There you go. But you're better looking than I am. Okay, well, why don't we wait a few more minutes to start the meeting to see if our secretary comes? All right. So it's not as windy as I was expecting it to be over here in Eureka. It was earlier. Mm -hmm. It was very windy here. It was blowing here. There is the man. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> here it's blowing the furniture around. We are good to go, Lilena. Okay, we have our Secretary Haney will be taking notes today. He'll be our recorder. Thanks, David. Glad to have you here. We were getting a little nervous. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I'm having computer troubles. Uh, I, I hope I don't cut out. I'm having, it's kind of rough out here in Pine Hill right now with the wind and, wind and everything, I think, but um, I'm trying my best. Okay, well, I, I, I don't think you're the only one. And so we'll just work through it best we can. Thanks for, for being here. All right, uh, I would like to call the Humboldt County Human Rights Commission monthly meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. And we will start with roll call. Uh, Morgan. Here. Haney. Here. Lines. Davies, Harper Desier, Lochte, here, here, thanks Bird. I can't see everybody right now. Um, Miller, here, Rowe, here, Sunberg, here, Arnoff, I'm here, and Dubois, here. All right, thank you everybody for showing up. Um, yep, you missed Larson. Oh, I'm sorry, Carol, I didn't have you. <laughs> and Larson, here. Okay, uh, do commissioners, do you have any adjustments that you wish to make to the agenda this evening? I, I would just like to apologize to our secretary. I uh, was, I thought I had recorded the, uh, the chat and that that not work. I figured it out this time. So my apology to the secretary. You're Thank on mute, you, sir. Eddie. No worries. No need to apologize, Eddie, but uh, it sounds like you've got it. So we'll, we'll be able to pull the chats from here on out, I think. Yes, yes Actually, we will. I, I, I practiced it. Commissioners, we're going to find out today that we are not allowed to use the chats um, because those are not public disclosure. Um, so we'll, we will have to figure out how to disable that chat. And, and David, Monique just stepped up. Carol and Monique, are you able to get on the screen on, on video? If, if you could try, I think we're going to find an answer today around that. 
Okay, so there's no 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 adjustments to the agenda. We can move on to the next item of the agenda, which is on the bottom of the agenda attached where uh, the approval for the regular meeting minutes um, from last month. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at those? May I ask um, the secretary, did all the changes get made that people put in there? Uh, I believe there was one change that uh, needed to be uh, amended that that uh, Lelania had put through, but everything else uh, is done. So they're not all done yet until that one last change I uh, um, uh, uh, approve is amended through. Can we can we take care of that so then we can approve it? Absolutely. Let me. Can you put up. it up? Did did every did commissioners did everyone take a look at those minutes? Okay. Thank you. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Good. All right. Do we do we have a motion? I move that we adopt the minutes of the regular meeting in February as amended. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, I, I saw Aaron first. All right, all those in favor, if you could raise your hand. Not yet, we need no. to oh. fix that that one part that David oh. said. All right, that so David will fix it and then read it to us? Can you do that, David? Yes, let me try to, I'm trying to pull it up here. Now we're talking about, let me just make sure I've got all the minutes up that we're talking about that were put at the end of that agenda. The 224 special meeting minutes. Right now we're only talking about the regular meeting minutes. For January. No. For, for February. Ah, yeah, for February. Yeah, February 7th. Okay, let me look through here. Let's, let's see here. And, and if, if you're not ready, David, we can move them to be approved at the next meeting. It's better to have yes, them done right than to rush something. Let's do that. Um, there are more than I had seen or I had thought prior. So let's do that. I got a little bit more work to do on these, and then we can get these pushed through at the next meeting. Okay, okay. would you amend your motion, Bird? I, I didn't hear that bird. I think we lost bird. Okay. Um, I call my motion. Okay, <laughs> there we go. You got me? We got that. We got okay. that you withdrew the motion. Thank you, bird. I appreciate that. All right, um, so we'll move those minutes to, to the next next month's agenda. All right, what about the, um, the, the, the minutes from the special meeting? Did all of you commissioners get a chance to read those over? I think the same thing applies there if they all the changes uh, got made there. I'm trying to pull that. I'm trying to pull that one up here. Again, we can. That meeting just happened. I mean, there's no shame in pushing it to to the to the next meeting, David. Yeah, let's push it to the next meeting because I can't even find that file now. And when I try to click the link that's in the R agenda, it's saying page not found. So let me um, find out where that is. Make sure it's legit, and we'll uh, push it through with the rest. All right, sounds good. All right, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Let me. Uh, tonight we have a special guest. Um, her name is Amanda Freeman and she is a part of County Council. Hi, Amanda. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, it's nice to be here. Hi, everyone. I see a couple of familiar faces. Um, so your chair has asked me to talk a little bit about the Brown Act with everyone. I do have a PowerPoint, and so if I can share my screen, that would be great. I think you can. Let me know if you can't. Okay. 
Yep, I think that is right. Okay, I am really bad with PowerPoint, so please bear with me. Um, why am, nobody should be bad at PowerPoint with all the Zooms that we've all been doing, but okay. So, um, so I'm Amanda Freeman, Deputy County Counsel, and I do have some specific questions that your chair sent to me that I believe she got from everyone, and I will touch on those. I wanted to go through quickly and um, just cover the Brown Act in general and conducting meetings and then answer a few of the questions that I have uh, received from the commission. And then if we have a little bit more time, we can finish up there. I've got, um, I have a meeting that I have to be off for at 545. So I'm just gonna sail through these and I will make the PowerPoint available to you all. So we don't have to discuss there's a little bit of minutia in here that you may not need me to read out loud to you right now. So the purpose of um, the Brown Act is to ensure that legislative bodies conduct the people's business openly. It, is, uh, it was enacted in order to make sure that the public which funds the government has access to what its legislative bodies um, are doing and can participate. And it only applies to meetings of local legislative bodies and that a legislative body could be um, the Board of Supervisors or for a city, the city council. Um, newly elected members are part of a legislative body, appointed bodies such as yourselves, um, any committees that the board appoints or that you appoint that are standing committees are subject to the Brown Act, and then certain private organizations that aren't relevant here. But there are exceptions for ad hoc committees, which are temporary committees comprised of less than a quorum that are uh, called in order to address one specific issue and then dissolve. Just so you know, you may have some of those. So a meeting, this is, this is an interesting topic. So what is a meeting today? You know, we've got a pandemic happening. Um, so it's a congregation of a majority of the members of a legislative body, but because the um, your commission has declared by ordinance that a quorum is five, then for you, a meeting is anytime there are five commissioners in the room at the same time and place or on the phone <laughs> to hear, discuss, or deliberate upon something in your jurisdiction. So I think that that is an you know, can, it's not um, if you're all attending a social, well, or a, a public meeting about something else. It's if you're, you know, in, in the context of discussing your subject matter. So your subject matter is, um, I think, I haven't actually wrote it down, but I think you know what they are. <laughs> Basically matters that the ordinance says that the commission should discuss and uh, advise upon. Um, so there are conferences, community meetings, other legislative bodies where you as engaged citizens may go and I'll be, and if, if you're not discussing your subject matter, that's not a meeting. Serial meetings are something that are pretty tricky um, because they happen accidentally a lot of times. So a serial meeting can be any time where say one commissioner talks to four other commissioners separately about a topic. They, it's, that's a spoken wheel serial meeting, but basically because the information, like one commissioner um, say in the center of the spoke is saying to another commissioner, well, what do you think about this? And then they talk to another commissioner, well, this commissioner thinks this. If the information is being relayed around something in your subject matter jurisdiction, that's a serial meeting. And then also, um, if there's, you know, a game of telephone is another way to examine another or uh, to imagine another version. So um, you want to watch out for that. And then last year, Governor Newsom passed a new law uh, addressing social media. So commenting on another commissioner's post on social media within the subject matter jurisdiction can become a serial meeting. So that's something I think is important to watch out with because so many commissions use social media to get their message out. 
So there's that. Um, so typically all the meetings have to be held within the jurisdiction of the commission. I mean, physical jurisdiction, not subject matter. That is a little bit different right now with the pandemic. So the normal teleconference requirements say that, okay, sure, one commissioner can call from somewhere outside the jurisdiction, but where they're gonna be has to be publicly posted. The public has to be able to be there. And, um, you know, it's a very, like it's a pretty hard exception to allow teleconferencing. Now there's an executive order as you all are familiar with that allows video conferencing and other kind of waivers of the Brown Act so long as the public can view and participate in the meetings. So that's been everyone's struggle for the last year. How do we do that effectively? Um, what are the challenges? So um, when you publish your agenda, um, and I, you guys are doing this, I looked at your agenda, you do need to have the disclaimer talking about the executive order and explaining how the public can participate during the pandemic, that they can call in or they can do the video conference and providing that information. And then each agenda item should include, uh, have a brief discussion of what it is and the business to be discussed. This is really important because you can't, as a body, according to the Brown Act, you're not supposed to discuss anything that's not on your agenda. So that can get um, a little confining if, you know, things get, someone brings up a good point. If it's not, you know, within fairly, you know, with reasonably within the subject matter that's posted on the agenda, the body should not be discussing it in a meeting. Um, and there is an emergency exception. If two thirds of the members are like, something really pressing has come up since the agenda was published, that's time sensitive, then you can have a, have a vote if two thirds of the members of the commission think that it needs to be addressed, then it can be. And please, if someone hop in, if I'm talking too fast, I just wanna get through the basics and then we can answer your questions. Okay. You're doing great, Amanda. Thank you so much. May I ask a question about what you just said? Sure. Um, if someone in the public brings up a topic and two thirds of the commission votes to discuss it, we can discuss it? Is that what you just said? It actually, it's more specific than that. So an emergency topic does require a two thirds vote, but it has to be something that has come up since the agenda was published that could not have been published on the agenda. So something new and emergent that just happened. And it has to be um, something that has an urgent need to be addressed before your next regular meeting. So it's really a timing requirement. Like you just found out about it now and there's a reason that it cannot be addressed at your next regular meeting. May I ask a question? Sure. Uh, two thirds of the people present for the meeting or two thirds of the commission? Um, it is two thirds of the members present. Okay. Is that helpful, Jim? Yes. Okay, or Commissioner Glover, sorry, I don't mean to be rude. No, I'm not. <laughs> He's not yet. He's coming oh, back. You're incoming? Okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, so public participation is the key to the Brown Act. Um, the public has the right to speak on any item of the agenda. Um, is not on the agenda um, and that's basically the public can speak about anything within your jurisdiction it doesn't have to be about you know it, it is helpful to try to keep the public on task because time is valuable and you know we, we want public input but sometimes you know if someone's speaking about something completely irrelevant it's it's appropriate to say you know this isn't a venue that can address your concern um, so one exception is that during special meetings, the public can be limited to speaking only on those special items on the agenda rather than anything within your jurisdiction. Just a little side note. Um, you can impose reasonable limits on the time um, depending on what's available. And also the public does have a right to all the documents that are you know, part of the legislative body's decision-making process. 
So closed session is pretty rare for commissions and committees. There is very specific subject matter. Um, and, and the reason that it's rare for committees and um, commissions is that I, a lot of the reasons that you go into closed session are around like threat of litigation or actual litigation. And typically um, in this example, the board would be handling those, not, you know, the commission wouldn't be handling it directly. Um, security, grand jury testimony, labor negotiations, real estate, um, and public employment matters. So one of the questions I did see was about, well, what happens if the Brown Act is violated? Like what's, you know, what's the deal? So there are two things. And the, the first is that it is a misdemeanor um, or it can be a misdemeanor for the public officials that attend a meeting where there's a violation of the Brown Act. And also if there's an intention to deprive the public of information that that, that public official knows or has reason to know should be disclosed, that's a misdemeanor. Um, now I'm, I'm going to, you know, that is the law. I don't, I think it is rare that misdemeanors are brought against public officials, um, serving on commissions and committees, but it is the law. So, and also I think probably the most important thing to remember is that anything that happens where there's a Brown Act violation can be negated. It's, it can be invalidated. Um, there can be judicial relief where someone could file a, an injunction or, you know, any, it just negates what's ha the business that's happening during that meeting. So I hope that that's helpful. It's basically like you can, <laughs> that it, it can just all be unwound. And these are a couple resources, obviously. I think what I'll do is I'll send the PDF and maybe you can put the links in the minutes or attach the PDF so that there's a record of this for everyone. Um, and I'm going to check the time. So I am going to probably spend five minutes on conducting business because I think that your team is relatively sophisticated at that. This talks a little bit about the roles of the chair, how to do the motions, and then I will answer your questions and see if you have any more questions for me. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. Um, so as we discussed, do you want to keep your subject matter juris your your discussion to subject matter jurisdiction that falls within the commission's purview as outlined in your bylaws and in the ordinance that created the commission? I think that's in County Code 228. So it does set forth your your, your subject matter. Um, and this is this section is about kind of like how the meeting goes. So Often when you open the meeting, you'll confirm that the agenda was posted properly in compliance with the Brown Act and with the executive order um, specifying that how public can participate. But the point is that if the agenda has not been properly posted and with the amount of time beforehand, the meeting can't take place. So I talked a little bit about this already, about the video conferencing. Um, and so I'm not gonna cover that again. So yeah, and, and you guys know this, but your commission has uh, 15 members and only five are a quorum. So I just wanna point out for your particular body that it could be eight, but it's five by ordinance and by your bylaws. So if the commission wanted to change that, you need to change the county code. So it's not just your bylaws that would need to be amended. Um, and so five, because there are so many of you, I just, in light of our conversation about five of you being at, you know, a community event or another government body meeting, just making sure that, that there's not discussion of things that are within your subject matter. Um, and yeah, if there is not a quorum, then the best practice is to disband the meeting. Hopefully you'd know in advance if that came up. <clears throat> So this is very general, but the, you know, typically you are serving as an advisory body to the board. Sorry, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I want to talk about there. So the role of the chair, and I'm going to just go over this briefly, but the chair is, you know, runs the meetings and can participate in the 
all of the parts of the meeting, but typically customarily speaks at the end of the discussion to allow the other members to speak first. Um, and generally the way the order works is the chair will recognize each speaker before they speak. And that is just a key to running an orderly meeting. If you watch, you know, the board of supervisors meetings or anything else, it just helps the flow. Um, and then the chair should announce the agenda item, sorry. Um, and invite the appropriate person or persons to report on the item, ask members of the group if they have any questions of any presenters, and then clarifying questions can be asked. I'm just trying to think about how to make this a little shorter for you guys so we can get onto your questions, so bear with me. You go through public comment, you discuss the items, and then motions are made. So the chair can ask the maker of the motion to repeat it. I think the key with motions is making sure that everyone is clear on what your motion is. So just make sure that everyone's on the same board. The secretary typically is keeping track of the specific motion as it may be amended or if it's withdrawn and then restated. And then there can be a whole um, discussion by the whole group if it's not clear or even after it is clear, there can be further discussion before the vote. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then a simple majority determines whether the motion is passed or defeated. And the results of the vote are clearly stated. So other motions, I am almost done, that um, commission mem commissioners can make are just move for a recess, move to adjourn, motion to reconsider. And that can come in handy if something happens and then someone totally changes their mind about it. So motion to reconsider something previously adopted. Um, that is, you know, sometimes can get a little complicated, but um, can be helpful at times. Calling for the order of the day is just to get everyone back on topic. That's important for staying in compliance with the Brown Act as far as your subject matter. And point of information is for clarification, just about like, what are we talking about? Like, I wanna make sure I'm thinking about the right topic. Um, and the question of privilege is, I'm uncomfortable, I'm not safe, I can't hear. That is probably something that's more relevant in person or with Zoom if you can't hear the speaker. Um, and there is a motion to limit debate if everyone is speaking and it's a very hot topic that can be useful. That requires a supermajority. And then to call the previous question is to end the debate. And that's another two thirds motion. So I'm gonna answer a couple more questions that I got by email uh, and then we'll open it up for questions for a little bit. Does that sound okay? Great. Okay, so the questions I got are, how should we deal with technical limitations and glitches that sometimes hide people's faces or keep them from participating? So there, basically we can allow someone to call in and that should be in your agenda that someone can call in if their Zoom isn't working and participate that way. Um, and then if someone, if, if it's not working for anyone, I would advise that you postpone the meeting. Um, if it's just we're not working for a public participant, they can call in and I mean, our, our obligation as a county is to make reasonable effort and provide reasonable accommodations if someone has asked for it in advance. That's an ADA issue, but there's a reasonable effort required to, to get everyone included. Um, let people call in again. You know, I've seen things where someone knew someone on the commission and they texted and said, hey, call me at this number. You know, you can work with people, but it has reasonableness is the standard that I would keep. Um, so with chat, um, so presenter only chat should be disabled. That is definitely a Brown Act violation because the public can't participate in it. Um, and then chat for the whole meeting is typically we don't recommend enabling it because there are other methods for the public to participate through call or video, and it's really hard to moderate. Um, so it depends on if you have the ability to have someone moderate and make sure that there's not, you know, things happening that you don't want to happen in there. So I would 
we have been advised, <laughs> we're not fans of chat in our office. So we generally advise not to use it, but you, you may not use it just among the presenters, just to be clear, that is a Brown Act violation. Um, and we, we don't encourage it for everyone because it's hard to moderate. Yes, Jim? Uh, I, this is the previous item you were talking about, but on people being able to see your face as a participant, uh -huh. I wanted to make sure that, was there a distinction between that and uh, as a visitor and that of commissioners? Can commissioners oh. under any circumstances not be visible? Well, I think it's best practice. There has been a lot of debate. I mean, the goal is that the public can view and participate as close as is reasonably possible to the Brown Act. So it's not, I actually was just looking at this. It's not hard and fast, but I think the best practice is for people to stay on camera. Um, as far as what platform you're using, there's not a requirement that in my opinion and in our office's opinion that everyone has to be visible at the same time. Like you don't have to have a grid of all of your faces, but people should typically stay on camera um, just so that the public can verify that, you know, the participants are in fact there. So how do commissioners participate that need to call in? Well, if you're doing a teleconference and that you announce yourself and you participate and that is fine. I mean, that is one of the ways that you can participate. But Amanda, if, you, if you have video, then you should use it. Amanda, if I may, um, on your last point, uh, and thank you for coming, and uh, I appreciate uh, you presenting this to us and to the community. Um, on your last point uh, regarding the chat, you uh, you say that you you encourage to not use the chat, the chat. But I'm just trying to figure out like what's the requirement? Like, does the chat have to stay open? No, the chat does not have to stay open because there are other mechanisms for the public to participate. So the public can call in, the public can and raise their hand using the you know touch tones. The public can participate by video. And so there's not, you know, there are other reasonable mechanisms for the public to participate. And, and so um, it can't be presenter only chat so you have to leave the chat open until you have to close it is what we're saying is there i'm trying to figure out like so it has to stay open until we close until it's closed is no, what you're there, saying there doesn't have to be chat ever and and they're in our our best advice is not to allow chat at all if you choose to I allow see. chat which we discourage it's really important to have someone monitoring it to make sure that there's not brown act violations happening in there so I mean, even for the whole meeting, you know, including pe public participants, it's just, it's not, um, it's just, it's hard to keep it track of, especially with heated topics, as I'm sure you're all available. Or this, this is, this is Eddie. I think when we were first starting with Zoom, we really wanted to make it super accessible to everybody. So we put it on YouTube and we put it on Facebook and we had it on chat and everything. But I totally agree that it, it, it does take bandwidth and we had somebody monitoring it, but it is simpler not to, to, to do the chat. So I totally understand that. And it's not public, you know. There you go, have, it's not public. It's not public, it's not, yep. you know. No, 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 you're 100% right. Public, the oh. chat on Zoom is not public. So we're not, it, 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 it does, in that concern, it's communication that, back door because the public is not privy to that communication. Um, I want to make sure really quickly that we uh, address the comment because um, it's pertinent to this conversation right now um, that Florence Parks put in the chat. But if a community member wants to share, how do we do so outside of the chat option? Well, that's in our, you know, we have public, public comment. comment. Right, that that's they can email us um, before public comment too if they if they have they want to speak on an agenda item, and then on each agenda item, as Amanda explained, there we open opportunity for discussion and public comment. Um, so within the normal Brown Act structure, there's plenty of opportunity for the public to participate. Can they they can use the raise your hand function down on the bottom? 
to indicate they would like to speak, can't they? Yes, that's typically what we do with planning commission and with board of supervisors meetings is, you know, it's not through chat, it's through hand raising and then um, someone's managing it and unmuting people so they can speak during the, their time. Great. Um, Any more questions? Oh, go ahead, David. This is still uh, related to this uh, topic too. Um, concerning the Facebook chat, because typically, right, we're, broad we're broadcasting this live on Facebook. And so there's the chat that's there that I don't think, unless I'm wrong, I may be wrong. I don't think that we have the option to turn off. Um, are we required to read comments from Facebook that community members put into the Facebook comments? Uh, so I haven't, I haven't looked at that before, but the, this Zoom meeting is your meeting. If you're rebroadcasting it, that's, that's fine. But this is your venue for the meeting is my thought. It's unreal. It's not possible to monitor YouTube and Facebook and everywhere you may be broadcasting this live, you know, and, and answer everything. It's just, so the follow-up question for me is if you can't, I mean, Facebook is kind of its own animal. People will just comment on whatever. So I don't, I mean, you don't have to participate and respond to those unless that's the venue that you're holding your meeting is my inkling. And I will follow, I will make a note to, see if anyone else has talked about that and, you know, thought about that or looked at that. But that's my inkling is that this is your meeting here in Zoom. And that's where you are responsible for all the subject matter and the public participation comes through this venue. So, you know, we thank you. Hi, whoever just stepped in, could you please put yourself on mute? Thank you. Hi, Eddie, I saw your hand. Eddie, I think you had a question. But I need to unmute myself. Um, and so basically what we're saying is that if we do choose to have it on Facebook and we do monitor the Facebook, uh, we just have to be, we have to treat everybody uh, equally. So if people do put comments and we decide to read it, uh, then we have to do it or not. It has to be an either or kind of a deal. Because sometimes we want to be super open and, and get people involved. And, and that's one of the, that's what we've learned that it's one of the ways to access people. We want to listen to people. And so that's one yeah. of our objectives. So as long as we have a standard that we treat everybody equally and we read all the comments, except maybe for vulgarities, uh, then that would, I don't know, maybe we should think about that some more. I think that's something that one of the new committees should go over when we're talking about protocols and operating procedures. That really seems like something that the commission needs to get an ABC one, two, three around. Yeah. Um, and then you all vote on how you deal with, with the Facebook chat. Yeah, and then I will circle up if I learn anything different, but I my understanding is that Zoom is your platform that you're, you publish your agenda and you provide the Zoom link and that's where the meeting is being held. And so I don't think there would be an obligation to read anything outside of this platform. Um, and, and you don't ideally even have chat in this platform. You have you know, times when you ask for public participation and people can raise their hands and you acknowledge them. Did Amanda freeze up? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I could hear Amanda just fine. Oops, it did freeze for a second. Am I back? You're, you're good from on my side. Okay. Can anyone else? Okay, Eddie can hear me. Okay. Um, Two hands up. Okay. Three, I think now. Three hands up. Yes. So we have I Meg. Meg has a question. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Lisa, uh, Lisa Sundberg has a question. And Florence let's, Park, I think, was the first one. If we could do this in, in some order, um, let's finish with the commissioners. And, and then, and, and so I think Guy had a question and then Lisa. Guy, did you, you have your hand raised? No? Okay, then Lisa. I, I just would like... I can't hear. Uh, we lost Lisa. She froze, she froze. So, and just real- I'd like to have a copy. Okay. We can get that. 
Lisa, we're losing you. Uh, sorry, I'm. Um, I would like to get a copy of the uh, presentation. Yep. Well, well, it'll it'll be in the minutes because it was a part of the meeting. So we'll make sure all that okay, gets great. in there Thank for you, you for everybody. Great. And, and we also have a copy in our in our share drive. Amanda, I have I have a question. Like in this moment right now, you are presenting to us. Yeah, it's a it's a subject that we obviously have community members that would like to ask you questions. Is that appropriate or is would we wait and allow them maybe in public comment to address or or how how does that work? Yeah, so um I am I'm an attorney for the county and and I'm advising your commission. Um, our department can't advise the public. It's not appropriate. There's a conflict issue there. So I can't respond to questions from the public, but um, certainly, you know, the way that this often works is the public will contact the legislative body members who can then, you know, bring issues up or, you know, somehow shape it to provide the answers that the public needs. Is that Thank helpful? you. That does. That really that helps. And so anyone who was had their hand raised from the public around Amanda's presentation, please follow up by emailing the commission and, and we can help support getting those questions answered for you. Commissioners, do you have any more questions before Amanda has to go? Eddie, or sorry, <laughs> David. We're both um, bald. <laughs> um. Uh, the question I have is at what point is a meeting of commissioners unacceptable in the terms of, let's say it's not at quorum. Let's say we schedule a meeting and there's supposed to be four people there and to have quorum, we need three, unless I'm wrong. Um, and we only have two. So then is that then a meeting? Does that meeting ever start? And is it ever a meeting of just two commissioners being together talking about commissioner subject matter? Right. So uh, your your body needs five commissioners to have a quorum and anything less than five cannot be a meeting because you cannot do, have any actions. So even if you agendized a meeting for four of you, which you don't would never do but even if you did and then all four of you showed up and talked about stuff in your subject matter jurisdiction you can't um do anything so that's not a meeting in the definition does that make sense so i think or what about for like our, i think where david is trying to get is more like around our ad hoc committees and we have some ad hoc committees that have four members and so if if they need at least three to show up to be able to get to work. If only three show up, can they still work? Um, yeah, those aren't, I mean, those aren't standing committees that are subject to the Brown Act. So that's a smaller group trying to get things done. There could be some ad hoc committee rules within your, you know, within, within that smaller group, but it's not subject to the Brown Act. Thank you. Did that answer your question better, David? Yes, thank you both. All right, Lisa, I see your hand up. Is that? Oh, no, that was from before. Okay, and then I think Eddie, you're next. Yeah, and I and I'm sorry if I if you already answered this, and so I, it kind of goes back to to David's uh, question. So let's say we have an ad hoc committee, and we're going to talk about I don't know uh, phone lines, something, and uh, we have three people that uh, are on that committee, and two people show up and we, so that's not a meeting. We can continue talking, we can work on something. Yes, so ad hoc committees are not, will never have a meeting because by definition, ad hoc committee is less than a quorum of a legislative body meeting in a more non-legal sense to discuss a finite issue and then they will dissolve at the end of that purpose. So that's, that's a different meeting definition. So I have one minute left. Um, I just want to say um, that I'm looking at the chat and 
I can't advise the public, but I will say regarding Ms. Park's question, um, so her option to ask and participate in public in a public <laughs> that public participation on this item will come when the chair opens the meeting um, to the public for comments after my presentation. So each item, agenda item will have an opportunity for public participation. Um, I am going to end my presentation. There can be an opportunity for public comment, but, and then the commission can respond to anything if, if it's within their subject matter jurisdiction. So that is the venue. I hope that that helps. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. So I'm gonna um, unshare my screen. Oh, good, maybe you unshared it already. We did. did. You Thank God, I just realized that that would have been <laughs> really boring for everyone. Um, and I'm gonna turn off my camera. I can stay on for like two more minutes and then I'm gonna pop off. But thank you so much. And I will send a PDF of this PowerPoint to the commission to include in the minutes. Thank you so much, Amanda, for your time and sharing all that great information with us. It's we my pleasure. It. Thanks for all your work. All right. Um, next item, shall we move through to next item on the agenda, right before, and then public comment will be coming up after that. Um, Lisa and Carol, you, ladies, we're going to review um, the new opening statement. Did you get an opportunity to take a look at that for us? Excuse me. I have not, not yet. Okay, well, let's, we'll push that to uh, next month's agenda then. Thank you. Mm-hmm, sure, no, we wanted, we wanted to do it right. All right, next on the agenda is- Bird has her hand up. Oh, all right, Bird. I do think Carol took a look at it because she had a, a number of uh, comments and maybe, maybe now she should make those comments so that we know what we're talking about for next time. Carol, do you have any comments that you'd like to make on the work that you did this month on, the, on, on that? All I did was some grammar errors and I wanted to acknowledge that when natives refer to themselves, we refer to that, especially in uh, federal and state arenas as American Indians. Thank you, Carol. So I just basically went through and found some inconsistencies with the use of the word Indian and native. Thank you, Carol. That's an important clarification, I think. <laughs> All right. Um, any 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 comments? No. All right. We'll move. We'll move that to the next next month's agenda and Lisa you'll dive into that for us yeah I will and I'll visit with Carol about it too thank you thank you okay next item on the agenda is public comment and these are for for public comments on non-agenda items um, and I want to remind the public that as commissioners, we, we don't respond or engage, um, but we are listening and it does impact us and we do want to hear what you have to say. So do we have, I, I see Meg, Meg. Um, there you go. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm admit to being confused because it, it wasn't meant to address it to Amanda, but I did have a question about if someone, for instance, myself, I have some voice limitations and some vision limitations. How can I participate in public comment? And also how could, um, how could I, or can I access this shared drive for instance, to get access to what the presentation just was or other yeah. items. 
So Meg, the minutes are, are all public information. And once these minutes are published, they'll be on the county website. David will, will get them on the county website and you'll have access to that document through those minutes. That's why the minutes are so important. Um, one of them, because it, it'll give you that information. Two, if you were unable to participate through video, um, as it says on, on our agenda, you can email us. And then as commissioners, we can share your letter. Often you'll see me reading letters that are sent to me from the public. Um, and you'll, and, and then we have a, 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 you can also call and leave a message and speak to a commissioner that'll call you back and ask them to, to represent that for you or come to the chair and ask them to, to share that um, during. We have, a, we have a place on the agenda for like emails and communications that we insert that sort of information. So not they're, they're, real time. Not, I'm sorry. not real time. In other words, you can't do it through the chat. So it would all have to be thought about and planned ahead of time, ahead of the meeting rather than something that I wanted to get clarification on while you were meeting. Yes, so, okay. that's the way the process works. And if I just may add, just to make sure that um, it's very clear and not uh, um, unclear to anybody with the, uh, in the public, um, I do the minutes, then the commission approves them, then the chair sends them to the county who posts them to the website. I don't have access to the county's website to post anything to the to available to the public. <clears throat> That's the county that does that. Thank you. Right. Do, do we have, thank you, Meg. Do we have, Bird? Um, I would like to, two things. I think Florence Parks um, has a question that now would be the appropriate time for her to do it. But the other one is Meg, I think there, um, for people who do have some limitations, uh, be creative and maybe even bring someone with you who will speak for you in the meeting when you have something that comes up right then that you would like to talk about. Um, we, we want to hear from anybody that we can hear from. So let's be creative and make it work. Can I interrupt real quick? I don't think we should be telling people that have handicaps to be creative and figure it out when the chat is completely accessible and all we have to do is mandate someone to monitor it. The chat isn't accessible, Monique, to the public. It's accessible to us, but it's not accessible to the public. Um, when, you know, it, it, this is a public meeting and, and, and so it puts us it's an, it's a gray area. And, and well, she specifically said that the meeting is the zoom. So if you're in the zoom, you're in the meeting everywhere else that the meeting is broadcast is after the meeting. So I don't understand how the chat is, is excluded. When we say the zoom is the meeting come to the zoom. If you want to be in the meeting. Well, I, I, I think as we said earlier, that that's something that the committee can work out and you guys can all vote on at a later time, maybe at the next meeting when they get it, but there's definitely protocols that need to be clarified on the commission. Yes, Eddie. No, I just kind of uh, want to uh, say what the Monique was talking about. I totally believe that we need to have the philosophy of independent living and, uh, and create an accessible community. And I think, like you said, Lelena, that's something we need to work on the future. And I think, I think there's some technological ways that we can do to, to solve it. But uh, I think we've made aware and we want people to participate. Uh, and so I think we can make that happen. Uh, it, we just need to figure it out. So Monique, if you'd like to be on an on a ad hoc committee or something, and if anybody else, we want to do that later, I think it would be a great thing to do. Well, we have a committee, right? That yes, we do. We have the Digital Accessibility Committee. We have the Digital Accessibility Committee, and, and we have the Bylaws and Protocols Committee. Yes, first. I feel like Amanda said it, that the Zoom is the meeting. So if I were at the meeting in person, I would be able to speak just the same as if I was in the Zoom, I should be able to chat. The Zoom is public. The chat is not. Right now, the Zoom can be seen on, on access on all the platforms that we have going out, whereas the chat isn't. And I'm not saying, you know, that's something that you- Yeah, that's why we would have a monitor. 
Mo, could you please respect me a little bit? Thank you. I, I, I just would like to finish what I was saying. Um, as a commission in, in the committee, these are things that you guys can work out and then you bring it back to the commission and you guys determine if you want to have someone moderate the chat or not. Um, so it's not an argument, it's just that committee needs to work that out and then present it to the commission as a whole. Yes, Bird. And we are also working on some ideas of how um, the Brown Act can be adapted and upgraded for our um, environment now. So this is something, it's a really important thing and we'll take that into consideration when we're looking at things we might recommend to the Board of Supervisors to, to get to the state to make some changes in the Brown Act. But right now it's, what it is and that's what we have to go by until we make changes thank you bird any more public com monique was that your hand lisa's here no. i'm trying to comment all right lisa um <clears throat> so i believe that that people should have access um where needed and appropriate or whatever and and the, the only thing i'm I, i'm thinking of you know just trying to just you know, have an open discussion about uh, about this particular topic would be um, the possibility that somebody could read it out aloud, maybe, or um, or something of that nature. Because if we don't have access, it, it, this is a technology problem. It sounds like not so much a, 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 an issue of not wanting to disclose it, because obviously we're disclosing this discussion. Why wouldn't we disclose the chat? Is there, a, is there a way to do that? And if there's not, it would just be some kind of like interim policy until the, the law changed that we just read it out aloud and we accept that as you know, disclosure, maybe something of that nature. But yeah. up for discussion yeah. again. I don't think anybody's trying to stop anything like that. It's just a matter of how to work through the uh, the, uh, the the law as it is written and the technologies that we're having to deal with right now that's available to us. Um, so <clears throat> I think that that's where we're trying to work through that little that little piece right there. All right, I, I thank you, Lisa. But certainly, <laughs> you know, I don't think any of us are trying to stop All right. any. All right, we we have Carol. Is that in response to Lisa, or could we have we have one more member of the public that's been waiting a while to speak? In response to the discussion, okay. I just wanted to make a statement that the committee, the ad hoc committee should be cognizant of what the attorney had recommended and her advice. So when they meet, just remember what our Amanda had recommended. Thanks, Carol. Florence, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, and this is my first time at this meeting. Um, so I'm, I'm relatively new to a lot of your discussions, but I'm very eager to hear about um, the work that you guys will do um, because it's much needed, especially for a BIPOC community um, in Humboldt County. I, um, my question though, through this meeting um, that came up was, um, uh, what are the major concerns with the chat? Because I can actually read everything that anyone's put into the chat as a public, as a um, new person sitting here, I can read everything that anyone's written. I can't write to any other commissioners. Um, I can only write to the chair and the co-host. So um, I don't believe it would be in violation with any of the Brown Act for us to host the chat option, especially for those of us that might have background noise or, or um, limitations, um, ADA limitations. So I strongly recommend you guys considering the chat. Um, it might, there might be, um, there might not be anyone else using it this, at this time, but if there's not a reason, a strong reason as to why not, it might just be a gap, a technology gap in, us just getting up with the times because we do need to be able to, I was answered quickly when I was um, 
you know, when I put in the chat, but when I raised my hand twice, I was ignored. And so I don't know how quickly, you know, the, the hand raising, um, it doesn't have a time on there. Does it tell you who raised their hand first? That might not be the most efficient way, but with the chat, at least you get it in order and you can have some um, one monitor, monitoring that. So that would be my recommendation. And I thank you guys for all your work. Um, I thank you for your time here and your diligence to our community and especially moving forward um, human rights issues. It's very important to our community. Thank you, Florence. I think that those are great recommendations and we have a committee and they're, I think they're listening um, and, and we'll see how it comes. Erin, are you speaking? Okay, I think she's speaking. All right, commissioners. Um, are, am I missing any public comment? Meg, I think you already spoke. Did you have something real quick additionally? Um, real quick would be um, uh, <clears throat> ADA has consistently um, uh, said things like um, requiring someone in a wheelchair to be carried up the stairs um, is not a sufficient um, way to accommodate a person with disabilities. And I appreciate Bird, what Bird said, but I would also suggest that um, um, the uh, uh, Human Rights Commission assign somebody to monitor the chat. The chat can be saved because it is a, um, a, a way for me to directly participate in uh, the, the public process. And I, I would very much appreciate that. And I'm sure that there are other people who would also. Um, so that is just all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Meg. I think everyone's going to take that into consideration. Am I allowed to, to uh, respond on this discussion at all, not specifically respond to anyone that made public comment, but just to talk about this? Um, am I allowed to during this time? Technically, no, but we haven't been following that. So if you'd like to add something really quick, we're at six o'clock and we haven't even begun on our agenda yet. Totally. I'll make this really quick. Just as, a, as an activist in this community for over 10 years, um, the interesting thing for me is that uh, you come to the Zoom meetings expecting to use the chat. And I've come to Zoom meetings where the chat has been completely censored. I was in a Zoom meeting um, uh, in a different commission uh, last year. And one, it was only one community member was making comments, very relevant comments. This is a man who's building houses for people uh, in this community and he was censored. And so it, it's, it's really interesting. Where's that fine line of like, you know, what is too much when you guys have to like shut it off? Because it's just one person commenting like too much. I don't personally think so, but that's, you know, just me. And um, the, the last point I want to say on it at all is that um, just personally as a person in this community, um, it's and I'm not talking badly about Miss Freeman, who presented to us, she was great. And the present presentation was great. But it's hard to hear as a person in this community uh person from the county say, we encourage you not to use the chat. We encourage commissions and committees not to use the chat. Because as, a, as, as an activist, that's like basically taking my voice away. That's all I had to say. Thank you all. Thank you, David. I will say something very quickly. There's a lot of work to do. I think we can solve these problems. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Madam. I think that's what that's why we have committees. We can get this done. Um, and so let's move on to a next order of business. Commissioners, do you have any communications you wish to share? Bird? Yes. I would like to take this time to say, first of all, thank you to Monique and to Meg for bringing up something and calling me on something that didn't come across the way I expected it to. I was looking at a situation and trying to come up with a solution. And that is the way I operate most of the time. I'm learning all the time, even though I'm over 80 years old, every meeting I learn something. I've learned something tonight. And I will need to be even more careful about how I look at situations and try to come up with solutions. So thank you for all of the, the comments and for helping me to improve. Thank you. 
thank you, Bird, for your wisdom and your open heart. I, I always appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Any, any commissioner communications that anybody would like to share? Anything going on that you wish to share with other commissioners? Is there anything that you guys did this month that you would like to share with everybody? Um, anything you're doing in the next month that you would like to share with everybody? All right, well, I, I, I would like to share that Aaron and Mo um, will be presenting at Zero to Fierce this Friday. Um, I believe it's at three o'clock. I, I can't remember the exact time, um, but in, in some other women, and, and it would be great if everyone tuned in and supported them as they give their, 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 their presentations and are honored as women. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, I, I believe I sent you all the information, but Humble Area Foundation is doing a public review um, regarding angel investments. Um, and as the, we carry a fund there, I thought it might be interesting for some of the commissioners to check that out um, as well. All right, message line. Who did we have on the message line last month? Uh, Mary and Bird. Mary's not here, so I can give my report if you want. Thank you. Um, I had several phone calls um, from someone who really talked a great deal and rambled and rambled, um, but mentioned that he really wanted to talk to Larry. So I dumped it on Larry. And I just have to say, thank you, Larry. You're, you're just the expert on the phone. And I really appreciate you because Larry just picked it up and managed to get in touch with this guy and I think helped him solve his problem. So thank you, Larry. It was, um, uh, I don't know whether you want to add anything, Larry, but you could do that as soon as I finish here. Um, I had another a call from someone who was afraid of being evicted, but I was never able to reach him. So I left that on the phone, um, the message line for in case he calls back and uh, let Lisa know that, that it was there in case she heard from him. And I, I was able to get to another person who was very concerned about insurance. And apparently the insurance was supposed to be providing some uh, transportation, medical transportation for her, and she was felt she was being harassed and not being given good service. She felt that she had tried everything, including um, legal service and everything in Humboldt County. So I found the phone number for the um, insurance commissioner of California and referred her there and told her to call back if she had any more questions. I didn't hear back from her. I don't know whether Lisa did. So that was what I had. Thank you. Thank you, Bird. Larry, did you want to comment on that phone call or? No, it was, uh, yeah, uh, he, he will call again. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Larry. All right, next on the agenda is treasurer's report, but unfortunately our treasurer is not here today, Eddie. Can I just ask a quick question to Bird and Larry? Has the, uh, has, you know how we have the form and area, is that working out? Is everything smooth there? Because everything seems to be looking good on my end. Well, the, the thing that I don't like about it is it makes, it makes me think I'm supposed to go on it every day, even if there's no call. And I was not doing that. I, I only go on when I get a call or even sometimes when I have two or three and then I put them all on at once. Mm -hmm. So I may, we, we need to discuss how that, I mean, if you want me to go on every day, I will try to remember to do that. But you know, and if, it's, if I don't get a call, I go on to other things. I'd like to add my two cents to that. I agree with you, Bert. There's absolutely no reason, you know, 
that we need to, you know, phone in, uh, you know, the commissioners are due diligence and we, you know, occasionally in the past, we've had a commissioner, you know, forget, you know, to, you know, deal with the phones and, you know, we ended up with, uh, you know, half a dozen, you know, calls on there, but that was, that's very far and few between. So, you know, again, I think it's just, uh, you know, the commissioners, uh, have a responsibility and they assume it. So there's no really uh, any reason to, to do that on a big daily basis. More important, I think, is to be sure that our new commissioners have all of the instructions because when I um, sent an email to Lisa that she was on, she said, I need help. So then I sent her all the information, but every new commissioner should have that in the information that they're given. Be before they shouldn't have to ask for it when it's the day they're supposed to be starting. So I, I wanna make it clear that every new commissioner is given access to the entire Google Drive. Um, and then we take a moment and sit down. We have not been able to do that with Guy yet, but I think what, what would be great to start enacting as a commission is, is just attaching these files with all our communications around them. Um, so, cause I find myself looking for stuff like that as well. Also, so just so commissioners know the directions, Jim did a really great job of building that sheet. Cause I forget how to do it and all the numbers and, and that I, what I do is I go into the intake form and then I use the top of the intake form as my directions. Cause all the directions are in the intake form. I might add uh, to new commissioners that, you know, I really uh, encourage them if once they are on the phone and in secure, uh, not really knowing what to do is to reach out to uh, other commissioners. I, I'm, you know, I'm happy to, to, you know, help anybody that has questions or doesn't know exactly how to deal with a phone call. So, you know, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, put my, uh, you know, <clears throat> my, name out there for somebody to touch base with if they need to because it is a kind of intimidating to hear some of these these uh you know phone calls they you know they can be quite quite critical quite important uh, you know i've had to uh, you know request uh, uh welfare checks uh, you know there's there's all kinds of things uh, that that we are uh, subject to on those phones so but it's a it's a great service, and I'm glad we're doing it. So. Carol has her hand up. Carol, I have a question related to the message line. In the past, we had our reference cards that we could look at to refer a caller to. Is that accessible on the website? It, or? It, it, it's in the Google Drives, um, but, but we can make that we can make it accessible on that one on that dashboard that's, that makes everything simple. That's an excellent recommendation. Thank you. Right on. All right. Any more discussion around the the email, the call line? Oh, all right. Let's move forward. All right. Um, we're going to move into our committees. Um, first is the Correctional Facility Liaison. Um, Eddie, curious, is, is, are we doing anything around that committee? Yes, you, yes we are. We actually, had a call. We, we actually had a call uh, and, uh, and we, were, we set up a, a meeting and then the individual that had asked for the inf information or asked for the meeting uh, was let go. And, uh, and so all the systems were a go. Everything got it. We got a... Uh, uh, got a call from the uh, from the officer. I can say this, uh, Officer Sarah. Uh, no, that's her first. I'm the officer at the correctional facility, and she informed, and the system worked. But then, by the time we had set the next meeting, the, the person had left. And that's if you look at the at the notes, that's what it states there. Okay, so it seems like it's still a committee that's viable. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, I I think that's yes. That's that's an ongoing and uh, yes. All right. Any 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 discussion around this committee or? Eddie, can I have a quick question? This is Larry. Uh, 
are are you are you guys in setting it up so you would two people would go uh, visit an inmate or is it uh, just uh, you know one individual so I right don't now, know we, in the past we've encouraged uh, you know two commissioners to go wherever po wherever possible and so that, definitely that, that, if that that's a little bit of our weak point because we have we have a couple of people that can do it and uh not Lisa. I'm terrible. What's our treasurer's name? Marianne. Marianne, thank you. Uh, so Marianne's the other person, and uh, and so ideally the two of us would go. With COVID, what we do is we 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 shoot that phone call and then we make the appointment. So, but yes, if more people would like to volunteer, especially new uh, people that are planning to go on board with us, like Glover, I don't know, just other people. Uh, I would or and Larry, I know you you've done it before too, right? Yeah, I, 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 I put me down. I should be, okay. I should be already cleared. Because yes, because yeah. it, it, it is bad policy to only have one person go there. It's okay. always better to have two people. Exactly. So we're going to exactly. add Larry to that committee. It sounds like awesome. No, 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 no. We're not no. going to add him. We're we're going to put him in the people that can go that are are, are designated to go to the facility. Okay. And so that's the that's the it, on, on the secretary's dashboard. There's the one the the second group there, and if you have any questions, you would just add them in there. Got yeah, it. Bird has her hand up. I I don't think that should be a committee. It's, it's not, not a committee. standing committee. It's just the liaison. It's just people who have that the capability of responding at that particular time. It's a, a little bit like our phone message line. Exactly. Uh, but for the the uh, jail, so it's really a report, but it's not a committee. Got it. All right. All right. So well, just really quick. So that what that means is instead of seeing one name on the dashboard of who is, you'll see a couple of names in the future. Got it. All right. Any um, any more discussion around this? Shall we move on to the next agenda item? All yeah, right. Uh, Jim, did you? I just wanted to contribute to, you can add any number of names to your dashboard, but they all, anybody that's going to go to the jail has got to have pre-clearance. You can't just show up. Yep. We, I think that's why it's great to have Larry on there, right? Because Larry has the pre-clearance. Well, how recently did you have clearance? I don't know how recently you did have clearance, Larry. Uh, uh, no, it's been a while. I just assumed, but I, you know, there's, there's, there should be a file there, uh, with, uh, my, you know, my clearance on it. It was, yeah, it was uh, you, you know, when I don't remember, I know when you and I went, uh, uh, how long ago was that? <laughs> a few years. So I'd be happy to re-qualify or recertify whatever is necessary. Yeah. I just didn't want anybody to show up thinking that they were pre pre cleared and then be turned away mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Eddie might know the answer to that. Uh, I don't know about Larry. Uh, what I do know is I know who to call or who the email, which is the same officer. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just put the question in and uh, seeing if Larry is there. If not, it's just a form which we have on our shared drive. So it's an easy thing to do. Yeah, good. All right. Thanks, you guys. All right, ready? Let's move on to the next agenda item, which again, Eddie, is the Human Trafficking Fund Standing Committee. Uh, you know, we haven't we haven't done that many things. We have the, the web page, uh, so yeah, no, we got got a little busy this month, and uh, so have nothing to report on that right now. All right, could could you? Um, by tomorrow call a meeting for that committee because there is business that needs to be addressed and make sure that that, that committee gets to address that because we have some money still in there and we have an application that got missed um and and i feel like that needs to be addressed quickly um so we'll if, do all right we'll i appreciate do. that thank you very much all right, well, uh, moving on to the Sanctuary Ordinance Standing Committee, 
um, we, we have not been able to meet and I will move us forward um, to the kindness and ad hoc committee. Um, this committee is, I believe up for expiration. Lisa, can you report on this committee? Um, well, the, the last place we left it was we, we wanted to, um, let's see, going back to my notes with, with Marianne, um, we set up, a, a, I think, an outline that we sent to you already um, on what we wanted to accomplish and, and how we wanted to lay it out. I don't have that the, those notes in front of me because I'm driving today, but uh, and I apologize for that. But I do believe we sent some kind of an outline, in the, and at least that's what she was supposed to do, and we worked on that um, for a bit to get that at least outline um, approved, I guess approved. I don't know if it was just presented to you or how, how that was, what we're supposed to do after that. So, so what, you, <laughs> what, what, you, what you would wanna do and, and you're on the road and, and, you're, and, and Mary's not here either, so it's understandable. Um, but what you would wanna do mm. is next month, well, first what you need to determine is if you wanna ask the commission to extend the committee. Um, and then with that extension, what you would want to do is just bring that plan um, or bird has another word for it. I think it's action plan or something um, to the committee. So you get the support from to the commission. Um, so you get the support and engagement. And I don't know what the plan is exactly, but you might need you, you might have some action you want to take that you would want their approval on. Does that make sense? So you would bring it to the commission. Okay, great. I, I will, um, what I will do is go over that with her again and figure out what the action items would be. I can just use some guidance on that from somebody. So what you might want to do now, because it sounds like you guys are still doing things, is you might want to make a motion and ask the commission to extend the committee for a few months. Okay, um, well, I would like to extend the, commi the committee for a few months while we get this all worked out <clears throat> that we can actually execute on something that will be effective. So that would, am I asking for a motion oh, then? Gerberd? Um, Lisa, you just say I move that we extend the commission for say three months and then someone needs to second it. Okay, so I, I so move uh, based on what you just said. <laughs> I second. <laughs> okay, great. And Bird Thank seconds you. it. All right, shall yeah. we have a discussion? Is there any discussion around the extension of the kindness ad hoc committee? All right, all those in favor to extend this committee for three months? Okay, uh, raise your hands. We got row. Morgan, Larry, Haney, Larson, Lochte, Desire, Sunberg, and Guy Arnoff. All right, thank you. Any abstentions? Nope, any nays? No, nope. all right, we will be extending the Humboldt Kindness Ad Hoc Committee for the next three months. I, I don't know that exact date, but it's three months. David will get the date down. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next agenda item, Racism Cultural Awareness Ad Hoc Committee. David. Yes, thank you. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, like a lot of the other committees, this month seemed to go by really fast. Um, we had a lot going on, on with the commission this month, this last month. Um, so unfortunately, we were unable to meet. So uh, I plan on calling a meeting uh, of the committee uh, as soon as possible. The other thing that I just basically want to wanted to add, just this is my own um, a little bit of input here um, when we talk about these ad hoc committees um, and racism in Humboldt County. We got this committee that's called the racism, which is a negative thing, and then cultural awareness, which is a positive thing. We got a racism and cultural awareness ad hoc committee, and it's kind of hard. It's kind of interesting how those two don't exactly mesh so well. Um, you know, I really, I really think that uh, this commission would do better to potentially have something like an anti-racism 
and so cultural David awareness standing committee, basically to acknowledge the <laughs> fact that uh, racism is an issue that needs to be addressed in this community. And I don't think that an ad hoc committee that's going to have, uh, let's say, a specific little goal um, here and there is going to fully address the issue. And I think that this county needs to make space for anti-racist uh, anti -racist activity. Uh, so that's, that's well, my comment. As chair of that committee, I'm disappointed in that statement because it's your job to make sure that that committee has a good name. It's your job to make sure that that committee takes action. So I agree with you. I, I think there might be a better name. Um, and, and, and that is something that you could come to the commission with. I would like to ask, this committee has been in action, has been, was created over a year ago. And there is not one action on our agenda from this committee. It's been through some hurdles. It's gone through three different chairs, which has been part of the problem, not to anybody's fault, but to circumstances. And COVID has made it very difficult. But it is time for this committee to take some action. So as chair, I am going to request three things of you. The first thing is within the next 30 days at our next meeting, I would like this committee to come to the commission with three social equity, social awareness training programs for the commission to choose from. They need to be volunteer because we are volunteers. They need to be accessible um, and they need to be available to new commissioners to participate in as well. So maybe a video program, I don't know the committee needs to determine and give the commission three options to choose from. Second, and, and I would like that, that is due at the next meeting. The second action I would like you to take is I would like you to identify where are the social inequities in Humboldt County? Um, you know, where are those gaps? Where do they need, where do we as a commission need to address this conversation? And I would like you to come with a report around that to the commission within two months. The third thing I would like to request of this committee is to come up once they discover where those actual social inequities are. You know, is it people of color? Is it women? Is it children? Is it elders? We don't know. We need to ask. Um, then I would like, after you've asked, I would like you within three months to come to the commission with a plan on how to address those social inequities. Yes, Bird. <laughs> if, um, David feels strongly that the name should be changed. That is something that could be done tonight if he wishes mm -hmm. to move that forward. Let's, if, if that's something, if David, you have a name that we could fix that right now, then I say, let's do it too. Do you, do you have one or do you want more time? Because it does seem like an important thing. Well, I mean, um, I had I had said it earlier, um, just having even just anti-racism, uh, anti-racism and cultural awareness fits better, sounds better, rolls off the tongue better. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm am sure I making like that motion? I, I'm I not I, sure anti is is the right word, though, because it's still around. If we're trying to if we're trying to alter racism. What is, what is a higher word than that? Because that's what we're really trying to, to do. It, r racism is, is about inequality, isn't it? I mean, I, I almost feel like we have to dive into it a little bit more to get a high. And the only reason I say this is because something Mother Teresa said, she said she'd never go to an anti, you know, a, 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 um, anti any kind of conference. She's always gonna go to a peace conference but not anti anything like that, anti hate or whatever, because it's still focusing on that one thing. So we're still focusing on racism. What is, what is it we're trying to accomplish by this? It, it, I'm just, I'm not arguing with it. I'm just trying to think out aloud about that piece well, of the you guys, Yeah, I mean, you guys are gonna be diving into what is, what are the inequities of the county? Um, there, there's a lot of, I mean, I, I think more appropriate names of the commission. Larry. Okay, a couple of things. 
I was under the impression that, you know, this committee was working towards the development of a proclamation uh, uh, that the Board of Supervisors would uh, sign on to that would declare racism a public health crisis in the county. Uh, that I thought was part of our mandate. And, and secondly, uh, the social inequities are real clear. We've got an ACLU uh, uh, report. Uh, we have actually <clears throat> the DHSS uh, report. Uh, <laughs> the inequities are, you know, glaring uh, educationally, uh, uh, legally, um, you know, employment-wise. <clears throat> they're there, so I'm not sure what <clears throat> you're asking uh, beyond that. Well, uh, Oh, anyway, um, I, 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 you know, I, it's a little bit unclear to me. And again, I think uh, uh, this ad hoc committee definitely needs to kind of recoup. We got in, went off in a different direction because there's a large community, uh, community members out there that are really super advocating for this proclamation. <clears throat> or uh, So it's a little bit... Uh, a little bit confusing in terms of what we were supposed to be doing. And uh, as I said, again, uh, that's my, my comments. Thanks, Larry. Bird, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would like, like to say the word has been used quite a bit. Could you just change it to equity and cultural awareness? That sounds can, good I, to me. can I comment on this? Please do, Mel. Um, I think that we're doing a huge injustice by letting the term equity consume our racism agenda because the two stand alone. And, and if you were really to break it down, each of our committees attempts to provide equity in that theme of the committee. And we shouldn't let equity take over the importance of racism as a public health issue. Um, and I do agree that the commission needs to be doing equity training, but I, I don't think that that should consume the work of the racism committee because the two stand alone. So I would agree with you, Mo. The problem is, is that the racism committee hasn't done any, you know, there is this proclamation that the community is working on, but as a commission, we have been, and this isn't, you know, we have new commissioners. So this isn't about, you know, it, this isn't like David's fault because he's chairing this committee. This has just been circumstances that this commission has been going through through the past year. And so we have no action for this committee. And, I, and what I would like to hear and I'd be willing to back down from saying like, let's get to some action is some ideas for ways that this committee can create solutions. But I, I, I haven't heard that. I keep hearing, I mean, we keep hearing as a commission what the, what the community is doing around this proclamation, but what is this ad hoc committee doing? As commissioners, we have different roles and responsibilities to our board of supervisors, and we need to come up with solutions as commissioners, which are different than as community. We can create solutions. We can bring people together in ways that an average citizen can't. And, and I'd like to see this committee take advantage of that and, and take some action. Because even though the community is doing one project, there's a lot of other things that could happen. And we do need to create in these operating procedures, a better way to one, ensure that our commissioners are clearly understanding what that means. Um, two, obviously in our community as a whole, people need to understand better what that means. But as commissioners, we can't fully educate until we are educated. Um, and, and, I, and I think that um, <clears throat> that kind of takes me back to uh, the idea that this committee was formed for a reason and then we're you know trying to get action out of the committee um, where in which this is, I think, many problems that are trying to get addressed. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that's why, again, I, I think that it should be a standing committee personally, because this is a standing issue in Humboldt County, the issue of racism. This is not something that we can just address for a year with a specific committee and it goes away. I don't think that that's a part of it. The only other thing I wanted to ask too, and I don't mean to ask this to be disrespectful, Elaine, I wanna make sure I'm, I'm clear to, before I say this, but um, at, at what point do we have to do this work that you've requested of us? Um, if the committee decides to do other work other than what you're requesting? So as I sit as chair, I believe that you have to, I don't know, let's ask Bird on the request, but if you if you read through the, um, the agenda, you'll see that that's a very short term and, and the next chair can do anything they, they, they wish. They could eliminate my request for that. Um, Bird, do you have anything to add to that question that David had? Well, I don't think that a com committee is legally bound to do what the chair requests, but I think that um, usually for a committee, there is a charge to the committee. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been very lax in the way we have formed committees. Um, and I think what Lelani has tried to do here is to give that charge to this committee with some accountability and some time frame, um, so I, I would think that probably the most important thing would be to look at what's been requested, have the committee discuss it, and and try to do as much as they can within the time frame that's been given, and then be able to say when they come to the meeting, we were able to do this, we were not able to do this. We are the timeline for this is whatever it happens to be. Um, but I, I think that under the circumstances, you would want to take these under consideration and, and look at how much of it you could do um, within the committee that you have right now. And then I would also think you should come back with um, a new name, whatever it is that the committee comes up with and the proposal for a standing committee. And then that can be discussed at the, the commission meeting. You've had a couple of hands up for a while. I see Carol's had her hand up for a while. Hey, Carol. Hello. Um, I've lived in this county for over 51 years. Racism is systemic, especially with American Indian community. And prior to that, you know the history with Indian Island massacre. When the word racism, and I agree with Bird that maybe racism and cultural awareness committee needs to have a different name. Um, cultural awareness, in my mind, and I have, or I had the opportunity to go to the state to do an awareness training regarding American Indian. And it's different than racism. So with the three items that you have suggested, I hope they're suggestions, that I agree with Bird that the committee should be able to go back and consider these considerations. I do know, unfortunately, with, my, with the COVID situation I had, I wasn't able to continue. There were goals that we had set and I have still those tribes that are willing, tribal councils that are still willing to meet with us. So if the committee could still consider that. Just wanted to say that uh, this is a committee that is an ad hoc. I agree with David, it should be a standing committee. And that's why I mentioned that I have lived here for 51 years and it's still here. And in one month <laughs> to come up with social awareness training options, there's gonna be a lot of discussion on that because there are many different types of trainings available and to do that research, to be inclusive of the different ethnic groups, 
it may take longer than one month. So again, David, if there's anything that I can do, I know I'm not a member, but if there's anything that I can do, I'm willing to assist as far as maybe doing some research for you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Um, I, I, I would I would just real quick loop back to what Larry was saying earlier, because um, we did have a bit of a, you know, we had that meeting at the beginning of December that you were in the Lania, um, where, you know, there was the discussion of setting up the process to support the proclamation that was being drafted and is now being drafted. And um, if anybody uh, in the community has been able to see that proclamation, um, it's a really beautiful piece of work that's coming along that the community is drafting. And I really think that it's in the best interests of the Human Rights Commission to try to support getting that moved through to the Board of Supervisors in whatever capacity the Human Rights Commission can support that in. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And I, I, I imagine that the commission will want to support something like that, David, from, from the community. My, my point is, is that this ad hoc committee could be doing something on top of that. Um, and, and that as commissioners, we have advantages that our community members don't have to create change. And, and I would like to see this committee take advantage of that. Um, and, and so, as Carol said, you know, this might take longer. Um, as Bird said, I want to put some deadlines on there to push you guys. So, you, you know, maybe it will take longer. Maybe you'll have to come back and ask for an extension. Maybe you'll come back and ask not to do it. I, I don't know the answers to that, but your committee, that's what your committee's for is to work through that. Um, but for right now, now there's some some focus. You, yeah, you know, when that proposal's ready or that proclamation's ready, then the, the community will present that to the commission. And, and that'll be great. But let's get this ad hoc committee presenting things to the commission and getting some action. And I think finding some training for the commission, because as Jim mentioned at the last meeting, it has been two years, and ensuring that that training is something that a new commissioner could check into really easily would really help us as a commission move forward around these issues better. Lisa has her hand up and has for a while. All right, Lisa. And then Monique. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, just a couple of things and, and still forgive me for if I'm not putting all these pieces together correctly, but um, I, I, I sit on the, um, on the National Institute of Health Board as well. And one of the things that we're dealing with is the fact that everybody has limited bandwidth. First of all, we're all doing a bunch of other things. And so to kind of narrow things down to a couple of achievable things that we can get done collectively that are reachable and achievable. And, um, and one, of the, one of the issues that we're tackling is cultural sensitivity um, just you know, in, 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 in healthcare um, or, or, or research, excuse me. Um, because the researchers that are coming down from universities and stuff like that, that research Native Americans, for instance, there's that cultural sensitivity issue that we dip to deal with. And being on the board of directors at United Indian Health, Carol, Carol and I both know how important that is in, in a Native American setting, you know, to be able to have that. So um, it, it's just an, an example of something that can be tangible that could be effective and, and, uh, and achievable as just to throw that out there. But to be mindful of, you know, it's just a matter of having impact act actions that, that we can say that we were able to accomplish a certain, a certain amount of things, so whatever I, that is. I, I imagine that this committee could come up with three because of who you are as a committee and you can ask other commissioners to help you ask all the commissioners to send you what they think would be a good training um but i would imagine with all of your guys's backgrounds and experience that coming up with three options wouldn't be that difficult if you guys work as a team and you pull on the rest of the commission around it 
Um, now I can, I can understand how identifying where those social inequities in Humboldt County are could take a little bit longer and be more intensive. But you know, we've also been talking about creating a human rights survey for the website. Um, so there's two jobs that could possibly come together and support each other in one and take less time for that particular ad hoc committee um, that maybe would help you start working on discovering what those things are. Um, and then I could definitely see, you know, needing an extension, but when I start seeing the problems, I start seeing solutions. Larry. Um, again, oh, I go sorry, back. Larry. Mo, oh. Mo had her hand first. I'm sorry, Larry. Mo had her yeah, hand. Yeah, I just want to echo what community members have suggested in the past, is, and is that that we talk with Equity Arcata uh, because they're a free resource that you know works through the city of Arcata to provide equity training for uh, you know organizations and and situations much like this. Um, and I think they could also even cater training to us, uh, which might be very beneficial for the commission. See, there you've got one already. <laughs> All right. Uh, any more discussion from commissioners? Can Oh, Larry, sorry. That's all right. I, I, again, I still, uh, I can't get back to this. What you're talking about when you're saying identifying social inequities. Uh, and again, I keep saying, aren't they already identified? And how, what are you, what are you saying? Uh, well, you know, things that are different than what the ACLU report has told us, different from what the uh, statistics and that DHHS has shown us in terms of, uh, you know, education in terms of healthcare, in terms of employment. I mean, those are the social inequities, right? Or am I wrong? No, I, I, I think you're, I think you're, you're right. But as a committee, I would like for you guys to come back and tell us. So we are all, as a commission, on the same page around that. You know, so we've identified that last last week. It was, it was asked of us to understand this conversation better. And the idea is, is that as a committee, you'll answer these questions and bring it back cohesively to the commission so everyone can understand where we stand as a commission around that. And, and maybe, you know, you, you didn't mention women, Larry. Um, you know, maybe uh, that's part of it. I, I don't know all of them because I've never answered this question for myself. Um, oh, there's okay. So you're actually talking about groups that are experiencing the uh, not not so much the. I mean, I'm, there's uh, you know Asians and uh, Pacific Islanders and a lot of a lot of groups among, are experiencing. We have a lot of among population that doesn't get right. heard hardly at all. Um, I'm asking you that ad hoc committee to tell us. Okay. All right. Any more discussion from the commissioners? Did, did we have a motion on the table? I don't think we did. Okay. Meg, I, I see you would like to speak. I'll open it up to the floor. So um, as briefly as possible, uh, my understanding of what Amanda just said, uh, you know, about an hour ago was that a, an ad hoc committee will uh, I'm quoting, never have a meeting because of the nature of it being an ad hoc committee. Without it being a standing committee, then it can't do the work. Um, it, it's been referred to over and over again tonight as a committee when it is not a committee. Um, it is an, an ad hoc committee, therefore can't take action. So. I, I think, you know, identifying that as uh, uh, something that could happen, my suggestion would be for it to happen tonight, that the chair say or ask for a motion to make it a standing committee so that it can have the appropriate um, authority to go forward and do the work. And um, I also would, uh, you know, strongly 
recommend that uh, we listen to the uh, chair, who, uh, David, who said that, um, you know, the, there's a, uh, a, a dichotomy in the, um, in the title. And so that, again, could be the, the work of, con of this uh, standing committee to recognize that anti-racism is something that's you know, now being uh, used as a preferable um, uh, by uh, Dr. Kendi and others who are in, uh, in positions of doing anti-racist work which is by nature equity work. So um, I, I, would, I would love to see a, a motion entertained so that uh, David, the current uh, uh, charge uh, person, has the, has the appropriate authority to go forward because the asks now are uh, beyond um, uh, gargantuan. Um, and, and Larry is pointing out that there's, a, you know, ample evidence from uh, longstanding reports on uh, ACLU, education, um, health, public health crisis, all, all of that, um, and uh, LGBTQIA, uh, the, the issues are, are here. You need to have the teeth. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. Thank you. Jim, and then uh Bird. Mine's brief. I just agree with Meg that the uh, the scope that you envisioned for this committee has gone way beyond what it originally was expected as an ad hoc committee, and that it probably should be made uh, into a standing committee and subject to the Brown Act and all of those things. Bird, just just a clarification. Amanda didn't say that it was not a committee. It is an ad hoc committee with a time frame and a specific charge. She said it was not a meeting under the Brown Act, which means that it does not need to be agendized and open to the public as the Brown Act and any standing committee does have to be. So if this becomes a standing committee, then it becomes uh, subject to the Brown Act Every agenda has to be agendized just as our commission meetings need to be. It needs to be accessible to the public and it needs to follow all the rules that the Brown Act has. So we need to be very careful um, that we don't mix the terms that are the legal terms in terms of the Brown Act and what we understand as words that we use um, all the time. And, I, and yes, David can make a motion right now if he chooses to make this into a standing committee and then the commission will decide if they want to do that. Eddie, thank you, Bird. I just, because we're switching from a, to a standing committee, I think there's a couple other things and Bird and Jim can correct me. And so I think we should make the motion and then vote on it next month. I think that's the way it works. So there's something along those lines. Uh, well, can you clarify that a little bit, Eddie? The process, then you're just, you're, you're Bird, trying to explain the process. Here, you're the yeah. <laughs> Bird, you're the expert. Well, I think um, considering the fact that we're running out of time and there should be some discussion about this, um, I think that it probably, you should probably ask to have this agendized for next meeting, David, that you will be proposing that this become a standing committee and that these are the things that you think the standing committee should be charged with doing. Um, and then the commission, everybody on the commission can look at that, the public can look at it and say, yes, this is what we want that com committee to do, or this is, we think you should be doing something different. Does that make sense? It does indeed. It, it's, it's a big deal. You're putting something in perpetuity. So that's, so yes. And you might want to, you know, talk with, with your committee, David, because as Bird mentioned, the difference between an ad hoc committee and a committee could be very restrictive. Right. That was my first. That's the main. And, and I actually agree with that. I, I'd want to speak with the rest of the commissioners in the committee first before doing that, because the Brown Act is extremely restrictive. And then it requires an agenda to be created and a lot of uh, the decorum, et, et cetera. Right. And so, um, yeah, like I said at the beginning of this committee's uh, time, 
uh, I think it's time to call a meeting of the commissioners uh, of this committee to talk and get on the same page at this point. All right. We have uh, several hands up, Florence, Lisa, and Meg. I don't know if some of those should be put down from people who've already spoken, but Florence um, has her hand Florence up. Florence is up next, yes. Hi, Florence. Hello, thank you for entertaining my my um, questions and statements, commissioners, and thank you for this long night. Um, I'm feeling um, heavy after hearing each of you guys talk about this very important matter. Um, and I'm also feeling as though the work is not being done. And I know you all come here with loving hearts to do great work as human rights commissioners, volunteering your time to do great things for our community. And this is one of the most important and integral um, moments of our era for our children to be heard, for, our, for people to speak up about injustices that have been done. Um, it's just a really important time. And um, I would like to press upon you guys that this needs to be something that everyone here should be joyously involved in because it is one of the most important human rights issues of our time. So um, I just thank you for, for coming to the table, but I'm, I'm very, I, my heart is heavy just hearing, I don't hear the love, I don't hear the passion, I hear a lot of talking about, you know, um, policies and procedures and how we're, you know, and I understand the importance of some of that, but where's the work? Larry, I would love to hear the reports, you know, first off, you know, if you have the data and you, in, in, in you um, have the information from DHHS and other reports, um, I would love to be hearing some of that each time. Every single meeting, there should be a point where we're all learning something together. Um, there should be, you know, there should be a, a moment of celebration of cultural awareness. There should be so many beautiful things that happen. And I'm just feeling like, um, like we're getting stumped by the process instead of the true work. And, and I'm hoping that you guys are inspired and find in your hearts our beautiful children. You know, I'm new to this community. I've only been here two years. And um, I have a six-year-old who is experiencing racism. And so this is important to me because I wanna be part of this community. And my daughter is one of few in her class. She goes to public school. And um, she told me today that some of the cultural things that we do, she doesn't feel comfortable doing at her home. I mean, at her school. And she's just starting to go back to school um, in person. And I just think, you know, we just heard, you know, there's simple things like Dr. Seuss books that we've, we've some of us have grown up reading and didn't realize that there was an implicit bias throughout them that kept us from loving one another. There are moments right now that we're missing. And um, this this is, seems like to me the, the, the place to come and hear as a community member that there's work being done in this issue. And, and this is huge and important. And it's why I come to the table and why I'm listening. So I wanna hear something being done. Thank you, Florence. I think that's, that's what we're all saying. And, and I think next month, um, it sounds like this committee is going to come to the table with 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 some action, which I'm excited to see for everybody. Um, did we have any more public comment? And I don't believe we do have a motion on the table. Correct, David. You're going to hold off. Correct. All right, then um, can we move on to the next agenda item, the Digital Accessibility Committee? Eddie, I was wondering if we have an MOU yet, or have you seen that? I sent out an email, but um, I want to make sure that MOU gets in the books. Eddie? 
Is Eddie frozen? Uh, sorry, yeah, no, I was frozen there for a second. Uh, I don't have a good answer for you. I'm not, when you talk about a memorandum of understanding with- uh, Access Humble. Uh, let me double check on that, Madam Chair, I don't know. Thank you. I did, I did send an email out a couple weeks ago to you and, and to them and, and haven't heard anything back, but I didn't know maybe if you talked to them or anything. Um, if that is something that that committee could kind of focus on, because we should have had it signed a little while ago, they've been supporting us and we can't really ask for the funds until we have it. Fair enough. Thank you. Do you have anything to report or anything? No, I, I, I like how some of our tools are working, even though they might be irritating to some people because they're asking to, to do it. But uh, I, I think things are functioning well, even though we have some snafus. But I totally believe that uh, it's technology that moves us forward when it comes to equity and things of that nature. So I think we're doing well, and there's much more work to be done. <coughs> Thank you, Eddie. All right, we can move on to the next agenda item, the Human Rights Cannabis Inquiry Ad Hoc Committee. Um, I um, reached out to uh, UC Berkeley, to, to Van Boostick, the director there, in asking them if they would take over the the writing of this report because last week my integrity around this project was questioned. Um, unfortunately, if they were to take over the writing of the report, it would probably take the whole summer. Um, but what he has offered is to edit, support me around that in the committee around that um, to ensure that it is unbiased and that I, I have checks and balances as I'm going through that. Um, so I, I cannot yet remove myself from that committee, but as you will see at the end, I'm removing myself um, overall. So that'll be one of the projects that I'll be, be finishing up before I go. Are there any questions around that project? All right. Homeless this ad hoc committee, Aaron. Uh, yeah, um, did you get the email uh, that I sent about, it, it was kind of actually minutes from that? Uh, I don't think so. Huh. Um, or, or I don't recognize them as that, I don't know. Uh, did, did, anybody, um, did anybody get it, did Monique or David, did you get them? I did not. <clears throat> Because now I can't find it, so that's <sighs> okay. I no. wouldn't call them minutes; it was more like a list. Yeah. Okay. With a with a blurb, which I got... did get that email. I think, yeah. and I think I saw you respond to it as the secretary, David. Hmm. I think I know what you're talking about now. The the t list of tasks. Yeah. What we're supposed to be doing, right? And I, I can tell you what happened, which is that um, Mo and I met at three. And, um, and then she had to go at 3.30. And then my uh, friend who's volunteering came on at 3.30 because she thought that's when the meeting started. Um, and what came out of that was just those two blurbs and the, at the top of the task. So it's getting kind of hard to meet. I'm not sure I've been trying to find a, a time that people can make and, and it hasn't been working. So I thought we don't necessarily need to meet as long as we help get these tasks done. Um, if that's okay with the other people on the committee. And the task I need now most is um, the contact list for the, the homeless providers. Um, I've kind of gone as far as I can because some, of, some other people are mentioning uh, different groups and I don't know who they are or how to contact them or what their name is. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is get that um, sheet filled in of all the contacts, um, 16 of them, I think. And then if, if I could ask the committee members to help with that, I would appreciate that. Um, and then um, I don't mind making all the calls. I'll make all the calls and just say, and then we send um, the email to Lelania, which actually I kind of did, but maybe I should resend it with the script in it. Well, the chair can't send out the email without, yeah, you did, you, you sent a draft out, but, but I, there's no emails. So you it didn't, you told me to wait, right, till you had a meeting. So I didn't do anything. Okay, that's, that's perfect. 
No, that's perfect. Um, because what I'm going to do is uh, I, I need to get that, sh that sheet filled in with all contact information, then I will call them. And then um, I will contact you or actually we can even do that in advance have a date Melania, where that email is ready to go out once you um, get completed. So you'll be contacting Eddie because after tonight he'll be the next chair. Okay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. That, was that a Until year? So you guys vote someone else in, but uh, that hasn't been a year. Nope, it hasn't. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. So anyway, that's what needs to happen. Um, All I, right. Sorry. So, is, is who? So, committee, is that possible for you to help Aaron get those contact info? Contact info. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. And David, you did a beautiful spreadsheet with all that on it. And then, when that gets completed, we'll send that to Lelania and to me, and probably to everybody. Uh, so I can call them, and and then uh, we'll give we'll give me a day or two to reach every, to call everybody, and then we'll make a date that Lelania can send it out. Oh, I love Johnny Calkins. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, he is not on the list, but you're probably right. That's a good contact. And if you want to forward that information to our Google Doc, I would be happy to contact him. Karen, we can't respond to the chat as commissioners, I think is what she oh. was saying. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, God, I'm sorry. That's okay. You know, we're going to, it's all learning curve. It's just, yeah. we got to try to learn. That's all. It's a learning curve. We just got to try to learn. Okay. 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 <laughs> try <Trying. laughs> with that one brain cell. <laughs> but guy can, but guy put that in the chat as a commissioner. So he can just out loud, out loud say what. Oh, that's right. That's right. He can. He it can, can be discussed. Say that. It can be discussed. Yes. Very smart, it needs to be publicly discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess my next question would be how, I'm not sure how to uh, accomplish this little goal. I, I'm happy to make all the calls. Lelania, you can send out the email as it's supposed to be. And um, I, I think I'm required and also I'm happy to facilitate the meeting. Um, also, when we get the responses, when David sends out um, that spreadsheet about when can you be available, um, we need to put, somebody needs to put that together and figure out a time that we can do that. Also, I would like, if we could get a meeting together, I would like to figure out, um, let's get a meeting together after we get all this out. And then we can decide between the three of us when we can be available and when what times we can make available to the providers. How does that sound? Okay, I like the thumbs up. Okay, good. Um, what are our next steps? I, uh, I, I feel um, this is, an urgently, urgently important committee. And I, um, um, I would, I, I feel urgent to get this work done. And I'm a, kind of hitting, I'm kind of feeling like I'm hitting roadblocks or I'm not sure why I'm not able to be effective enough. So um, I'm open to comments or input. So what kind of roadblocks, Aaron? Um, I don't know, we can't get a meeting and um, I don't know. Um, maybe we don't need to meet. Let's try meeting after we get all this stuff out. Why don't we put some goals? So w would this work? Could we, could, what, if, what if we said within the next week, your committee members get you, whoever they wish to have emailed, they get you those resources. And then before the next meeting, you guys accomplish those goals that you have that you mentioned and meet before the next meeting. So then you're giving your team a week to get that information together for you, but you're also giving them a deadline. Right, and then we also have a whole month before we get back and yes. Right. And then you've got a week with that information and you got three weeks to get it all moving. I like it. How about the other committee members? What do you guys think? Uh, we're, we're uh, unless I'm wrong, I'm looking at the spreadsheet um, of uh, stakeholders that we've planned, we're planning for outreach that you would be outreaching to Aaron. Right. And I, it only looks like we're missing three names, potentially four, if we're going to add uh, Johnny Calkins, like a uh, guy had said. So, I mean, I don't think that's going to take that long. I just don't, I don't have access to any of these people's numbers or names. Otherwise I would help. Um, that's what I, that's what I'm can't find. So I don't know how to access them if I don't find their contact info. It looks like I saw a guy raising his hand. Yeah, I can, I can give you Johnny's number if you want it. 
Sure, just fill it out on that uh, form. We need to get the, fill it out on that Google sheet. Okay. David, can you send that to people or to Lelania and she can send it so everyone can fill in their fill in the contacts that they have. Yep, I'll make sure it goes out. And I have missed, and I, there are, at least as I left it, I left a lot of holes in that contact information because I don't know who we should talk to at the sheriff. I think Neander just retired um, and I don't know who's new in there. So um, anyway, that's where I am. Also, um, I'm not real clear on this and I, I wanted to ask her and I forgot with the emails and the phone calls, you guys, we, you need to be careful with the chair you can loop in, but when you're asking for those resources that you're, not that five right like the emails aren't more than five the phone calls aren't more than those that five core folks so we're not violating the brown act that makes sense uh yeah so never never have an email link and don't do reply all never have email to more than five people yeah so far i'm just you but i guess it should be eddie and then the, the two committee members it's actually four if you have five, you have a quorum and that's a meeting oh, oh. of the commission. So you can't have five. You must stop at four. We're at four. We're at four. Thanks, Bird. <clears throat> uh, anything else, Erin? Uh, no. Um, I guess that's it for now. Any discussion from the commissioners? Any please have. Uh Hi, Lisa. Hey there. Um, so just real quick, and maybe it would be helpful going forward because I'm doing this with a couple other committees, but it's like, um, it'd be nice to know what um, these committees are like trying to achieve, you know, so that's like front and center. So okay. I know what, how to support one another because it, I'm not hearing what, we're, what you're trying to do. And I would say that same thing with me with, with this other committee is trying to understand where we're all at with these different projects we're working on. Okay, I'm sorry, let me explain that. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, we're putting together a list of, of people who provide services for homelessness. Um, and we're going to try to put together a providers forum that will address uh, problems that are coming up and prevent them, hopefully. Prevent and address problem. What are the problems? We're asking them two questions. What are the problems and how can we address it? So I'm gonna give them that in the email. I think I put that in there, I hope, Lilinia. Those two questions should be in the email. This is what we're gonna address at the forum. And then we'll just have a chat with the providers so that they can be on board with each other and we find out where the holes and services are, what our biggest needs are gonna be and how we can address them. Does that, um, Lisa, did that kind of answer that project? Does that explain the project adequately? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but I, I, I kind of feel like, um, um, no, I, I, I'll wait to my comments for another time, but thank you, appreciate well, it. I'm, I'm happy to answer anything that I know. If, if I didn't do that right, I'm happy to clear that up. So just let me know. Um, yeah, I just wanna give myself some more time to think it through. Thank you. Sure. Um, Monique, do you have any comments? Monique? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you, do you have any comments on, on this nope. on project? Okay. If I could just take a quick second just to point people to a resource while we're on the topic of homelessness, a resource that was brought uh, uh, to my attention recently um, and some others, I believe, as well. There's a program in California. You can find the website for it, Roadmap Home ca.org roadmap home 2030 it's a program with uh, some policy initiatives for california that i think people really need to look at and uh people in jurisdictions need to advocate for mm -hmm. yes thank, thank you. you david you should send that to eddie so he could post it on our facebook page Will do. all those resources you guys if you if you send it to the person who has access to the facebook page then you're sharing your information with the community through the commission um it really really helps us as a commission when the the commission itself supports the folks on social media trying to support us all right any any well, other I yes lisa yeah, I, I, just a question, just because I'm really still trying to understand our, our role 
in relationship to a situation like, um, I, and, and something I'm just going to report out loud, of uh, a, a, a new housing program that has, uh, that I, I'm aware of, a, you know, a homeless person that went into this program. And um, it, it, in, and these programs are designed the way I see it in, the, in, these, in these new housing developments for low-income people that if you work too much, then you're penalized and you can actually lose your spot at these locations, which is like the opposite direction. I think, you know, people, you know, we should be going for people that are trying to stay um, in housing. And so they can barely afford, you know, they, when they applied, this person applied for a, a, um, a, a, a space, but their income went down and they're afraid to, to report that. So I'm just like watching this whole thing where somebody is like, can't afford to pay for food for their kids, you know, barely staying in this place and afraid to work because they'll make too much money. I don't know if our, our, what our job is in that kind of circumstance, uh, uh, other than it, it was somebody came from a homeless situation and now afraid to be homeless again, if they, if they disclose that they don't have an income now because of COVID. So are you a part of the, the, the homelessness committee? Cause I'm no. just trying to tell you what, I'm just trying to figure out what, how I would, what advice to offer you. So <laughs> if you felt if this was something that, that, that you wanted the commission to address, then what you would do is you would go to the chair and you would say, I would like this on the, the agenda um if or you could also go to Aaron and and have a conversation and and say is this something you're addressing or can you address this and, and have that conversation that would be the first step would be go to go to Aaron and if you felt not heard and you felt like Aaron wasn't taking you seriously then your next step would be to go to the commission or to go to the chair and and ask it to be discussed Am I correct in that, Bird? Did I? All right. <laughs> I'm learning. Did that, does that help, Lisa? Yeah, I just want to, you know, I kind of feel like I, I, I want this young girl who commented on, I, on, you know, are we getting anything done? I feel this, you know, you know, I know that we're talking a lot of protocols today and, and they are important. And the reason why they are important is that if we do all this work, and we don't follow protocol, we could undo ourselves. Exactly. And that's what, that's why we're having this conversation. But I also feel like, you know, we do need to be on point and on task of getting things done and addressing real issues that are, that are, um, you know, like this one I'm just talking about. I mean, like it is like a trap and I want to have it addressed somehow. And it's a real tangible thing that you know but i don't know what our commission can do just yet i don't know all our superpowers yet so thank oh. you for that comment though and showing me how to move that along bird unfortunately lisa we do not have superpowers we are an advisory committee appointed by the board of supervisors and what we can do is make recommendations to the board of supervisors so we, the work that we do has to be around coming up with recommendations that we think are solutions to problems that we see, and then make those recommendations to the Board of Supervisor. It's, a, it's a, all that right. well, I mean, it's the same, but that's what it is. Right. Well, at least we can address them and get it to them. So our superpower is to bring awareness and he handed over to the, to the uh, Board of Supervisor for action. So that's where our power is, right that's there. Right. Thank you. you All right, got it. Thank you, ladies. And, and Lisa, I'm completely available to anytime. Okay, great. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Okay, any more discussion around this agenda item? All right, let's move forward to the Citizen Observer Ad Hoc Committee. Eddie. So bottom line, it's late. I, I strongly believe since we haven't done anything for you, Madam Chair, on that, that we should table that. Uh, 
Doesn't mean it doesn't go away, but let's table that for a couple of months because we're gonna have so much things to do. So I'm, I'm making the motion that we table the uh, observer ad hoc committee. All right, do we have a second for that motion? Bird. I'll second. All right, I think Bird got it. Any discussion? Okay. I, uh, I, I agree, we've got so much on our plate. This is a good time to table this because no one can come out in public anyway. And if they do, they're probably gonna get killed, but. <laughs> <laughs> really, really quickly, do we have to uh, actually have a motion to table this because this committee is expiring? So, do we need to do anything? Bird says no. Nope, we don't. Not if it expires. If we don't have a motion, it uh, it just expires. We'd have to have a motion to extend it. So, if it's expiring, it just goes away. All right. We can, always, we can always do it again at another time when we have more um, personnel. Interest. All right. So we'll just let it close. Sounds like I retract my motion, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. All right. Our, our next agenda item is the application review ad hoc committee. Aaron. Um, I believe um, someone came up with a brilliant idea just to put the, it might've been you, put the um, statement of human rights in the, in the application and just check a box. Do you believe in this or something like that? Brilliant. That was actually our former chair's idea, Jim Glover, and it was um, a brilliant yeah. idea. Nice work, Jim. Laser beam, fix the problem. Good work. <laughs> I, I would also like to say though, that I think somewhere um, when people check a box, yes or no, there should be a space where they can comment. They don't have to comment, but I would just like to have that as a space underneath which says comment. Excellent, excellent idea, as always. <laughs> so it sounds like you guys are still gonna, go ahead, Bird. I, I move that we present this to the Board of Supervisors with these changes, very small changes, but that we present that to the board as our recommendation. And what are the changes? The changes are we add the, uh, purpose of, the purpose of the Human Rights Commission, a question which says, do you believe in this um, mission statement? Yes or no? Uh, it, and, support, I would say support rather than believe in. Support this, yes. And then um, uh, another, space that says comment mm -hmm. and it could yeah. say optional if you want but i mean that's a space for people to say i mean how what they think about it it gives them a chance to say something if they want to i love it all right and sounds like we have a motion on the table second okay all those in favor of with the adoptions presenting the new application to the Board of Supervisors. You have to ask for discussion. discussion. Oh. <laughs> All right, discussion. <laughs> All right. Call for the question. <sighs> All right. What was that, Lisa? Isn't it call for the question? Isn't that so we can vote on it now since somebody talked about it? Yes. All right. David, okay, will you will you repeat the motion so we can vote on it? Motion to present the Board of Supervisors with these changes to the Human Rights Commissioner application. Add the purpose of the Human Rights Commission a yes or no question asking, do you believe this mission statement? That was support, do support. Do you support, thank you. Do you support this mission statement and additional space for comment? Perfect. Perfect, thank you. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Ro, Haney, Larson, Lochte, Miller, Morgan, Desair, Arnoff, Sunberg, and Dubois. All those, any abstentions? Any nays? All right, it passes. You're okay. amazing, David. You got everything perfectly. You know, he, he's Thank the you, best Bird. secretary we've ever had. You're, you're good. Yeah. 
Hearing know. from Bird that I'm amazing means a lot. Thank you, Bird. <laughs> I, Aaron. Oh, I agree. And I think, Lelania, we need to disband the, that committee now, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's do we do need that. to vote on that or do we just disband it? Bird? Gosh, we've never done one so quickly before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We just let it ex expire. Let it expire. expire. Let it expire. Jim has. Well, yeah, its mandate has been met, so you're finished. Yeah. All right, the committee is over. Great job. <laughs> I've got to love that. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jim. <laughs> All right, uh, the, the last committee is bylaws and policy review ad hoc committee, Bird. Not quite sure why I was that, but we, we do have, um, uh, Eddie has set up a meeting, but it hasn't happened yet. So it's, it's, we have nothing to report right now, right, Eddie? That is correct. I think it's this Sunday or next Sunday. And so, yeah, we just got that started. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Do, do Eddie, do you have the copy where I inserted all the information that County Council gave me? There's a draft for 2021, and then there's the, the old copy. If, if, if there isn't, there will be. I'll call you up and ask you. OK. Or you could just put it in the folder. There's a folder dedicated to that committee. It, so. sh it should be. I just want to make sure it is. I don't know for sure, but if you can't find it, let me know because I okay. it should be in there. But you know, just put it in the put it in the share drive. I can I'll tell the word that you put it. Okay. All right. Um. All right. Unfinished business from our last agenda was uh, a human rights survey for the website. But since we're so late i think we can move that to the next meeting and then new business is this will be my last meeting um, as as your chair um, i also am resigning from the commission um, i will finish up the uh cannabis survey as i mentioned earlier um and i will be working on um parts of the end of the year report. So the, the person coming in my place doesn't have such a burden on them. Um, but my last day as a commissioner will be April 1st. And I just want to tell you guys that um, I serving this commission for the past five years and growing up in this community has been one of the biggest honors of my life. And, and, and I getting to learn from folks like Jim and Bird and Larry and Aaron and Carol. I mean, you guys were all here when I first started and, and, and then getting to continue to learn with Eddie and David and Monique and Lisa. And, and I know you just came on guy, but you've done some work beforehand for us is just growing up in this community in the way I did. Um, it really, helped me really believe that we are the people that I grew up with. And those are some pretty amazing individuals and it's been an honor working with all of you. If I can ever be of support outside of the commission, please reach out. Yes, Bird. I'd like to say, thank you, Lelania. I am amazed at how much work you have done, particularly since you've been the chair, but even before that, you started the um, Human Trafficking Fund. Uh, you have done so many wonderful things for this commission. And I, I hesitated about saying anything about this, but we have talked about the chat. And one of the things that I think has been very unfortunate is that sometimes people have put something in the chat that has been has seemed to be personal against one or more of the commissioners. And that is very hard for those of us who really are trying very hard to do the best we can. I know Florence said that she didn't hear our heart. Um, I'm, a, I'm afraid you don't hear my heart, but it's there. And Lelania's has been out there on her sleeve this whole time. She has done amazing work for this commission. And we all owe her a huge vote of thanks. So. Thank you, Lelania. Thank you, Bird. I really. I, I would like to. I would like to state really quick before is I want to thank uh, Lelania for all the hard work she did. I think you did a great job. I also want to state that as 
the person that has gotten that uh, responsibility, my goal is going to be to find the chair in the next three months, if not sooner. And uh, so I will run things along, but uh, just keep that in mind. And I want uh, I want to thank uh, Lelena for the great job that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. You Eddie. are the chair, Eddie, unless you go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm not going, but I'm going to find the chair to take my place because I'm, 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 I'm selected as the vice and I consider that my mission. And there's plenty of really good people on this committee. Uh, and you have to forgive me if some of the old, uh, some of the people that have been around for a long time, I don't ask you as much, uh, but uh, we will have a chair very soon because uh, that's, I think my, that's my responsibility to find that chair in the next few or so months. Eddie, I'll be calling um, IT in the morning to make sure I don't have access to the email. And, and I, if you could call them very quickly so you do have access to that email, that would be fantastic. Lelena, Karen. Um, I would echo, you know, what um, Eddie and Bird said. I, I think your work has been magnificent. I think you've accomplished so much. And I'm really very, very sorry to see you go. And I will miss you very much. And thank you for your thank you. It's you been a pleasure time. working with you. It really has. Ditto. Hey, Carol. Hey, Lelena. <laughs> From the first meeting, you attended, you have been a dynamite. I know. Mm -hmm. You have shown, sorry, um, enthusiasm. You've always been positive. You come up with ideas that are out of the box. And when you do that, you lead us in a direction that we may have never thought about even going down and it's always been a good way. Um, I'm sorry to, that you're leaving. And it, it's a time that uh, the decisions are made and we honor and respect your decision and your offer to be present to help us in the future is we'll be accepted and hopefully we'll use you as much as we need. And again, thank you. To be tipi you amu. And as we say in our language, to all my relations. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Carol. It really has been a pleasure working with all of you. All right, I would like to- Do I get a, do I get a oh, say? <laughs> Hello, I have my hand raised, girl. <laughs> well, I have known you outside of this space and I know your heart. Um, and I know, and, 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 and since I have been here, you've been such a great example on how to be inclusive the best you can. And I don't think people realize the amount of dedication that it takes just to be the chair and the amount of hours uh, you know, of not getting paid, but to do this work is all heart. That's the only thing you can drive yourself on because there's no money in it. It is just pure, pure love you know, of making sure that, that, this, that there are voices that are heard in a very important area. And I know you've grown up with, my, you know, with our people. So I, I have no doubt uh, of the integrity that you have um, in, in making sure that um, the, the you know, voices are, are, are heard because this is important work. When you got me here um, and, and so, um, and, and, and talked about the importance of this work. I don't want it to be, a, you know, a place where uh, I, I just want this to be a powerful space. And thank you for, for setting an example on, on um, what it looks like to not only be professional about running meetings, um, but also you know, just giving a voice to people. Because um, that's hard to do. Not everybody is able to pull that off and, um, and or understand the kind of work that it takes. But I, I, I know you. And I know that that's what you've done. And I appreciate that. And I'm really sad to see it go because, you know, because I did look forward to having some more meetings and seeing you, you know, do your thing. 
but um, but I do wish you the best uh, always, you know, in whatever endeavor you find yourself in and I have uh, great admiration for you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And yes, Erin, we are friends. I think of all of you as my friend, really. Um, you know, you guys have just watched me grow through, I, I came to the table as a total crazy grassroots activist, wanting to change the world, wanting to change the government. And thanks to all of you, I learned how to actually do it without having to yell so much. Um, and, and it really is all of yours leadership that helped me be a good leader for the past few months and a good commissioner. Um, so I, I just really appreciate everything you all have given to me. All right, shall we end this meeting, folks? All right, I would like to call to the end of the Humboldt County Human Rights Meeting at 7.34 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and supporting the commission. Goodbye. Thank you. Sunday, Anna.